welcome back. This is Jason Seacrest. We are going to go through our coloring demonstration on how to do our little puppy here. So what we did on our last video is we already inked everything. We just finished uniting all of our lines and then we came over to object. We dropped down to live paint and then we clicked make. All right. Decisions, decisions. So whenever we're doing our values and whenever we're doing our colors, I'm going to just go through the colors that we have. This is a great time to just go over to, and this is straight off of uh, Adobe Color, by the way, but just Google all I typed in for the search. I believe it's called Explore, and I typed in Puppy, and that one magically popped up. So it is a very, very easy thing to do, especially if you guys are new to colors, but typically someone has taken the time to grab some colors, and then we could always come through and basically did what we just did and modify those colors. So. Now let's have some fun. We've got our live paint bucket, work K, and now you're going to notice that it starts to highlight up. So let's just do kind of our base colors first. And if you haven't done this before, we are going to come back through and we will call or everything and add our values later, but just kind of get a sense of what our guy looks like. I just want to kind of get some base colors down first. Next thing I want to do is things that people typically forget are the white areas. Now those highlights should already be white, by the way. I want that to be white. I want that black line to be white, so it's going to magically disappear. And then let's do some of our nostril parts. Double check this guy. That's still pretty dark. So, all I'm doing right now is you're going to notice that the lines are being selected. So, I'm just coloring it our dark. I don't necessarily think it's a brown, but go through. Just try and get rid of all of the black. Probably for the sake of argument, it's going to be black, but that's okay. Click, click, click. All right. So flat colors are done. Now, if for some odd reason, you're like, hey, I want to, like, I know that guy's going to get dark. So if I know I'm going to be filling in areas, this would be a good time to start filling in any blacks. So if you want to see what the ears would look like black, go for it. I kind of like that. Okay, we're going to leave that alone. Next little step, black arrow. We're going to go object expand. Hit OK. Now keep in mind, every time we do the live paint bucket, we're going to come back through and ungroup it. And I do want to show you that none of this stuff is permanent. We can change any of those things at any point. So let's just say, hey, I don't like that change. I could always just come back through and change it up. So it is a very easy process if I ever want to change what I have. And so we have everything ungrouped. And now we are going to start to add in our values and our patterns. So this is going to be our flat color. So what I want to do is duplicate this guy. And I'm going to lock that guy out. So let's just say this will be our values. Now with the values, I want to magic one. I always like doing it this process. Control X. So basically, looks like that at this point. New layer. I'm going to lock that guy out. Control F, which is just paste in front. And if you like your blacks, what I like to do is just unite 
and so now all of our blacks are kind of colored in together and that really will just take away any sometimes there's these funky little lines with the live paint bucket and that'll just kind of get rid of those so it still looks the exact same the only major difference is we have a little bit of a gap keep in mind I still have my flat color underneath it so when we start doing our values sometimes there's these funky little lines that happen and so this base color prevents any funky lines from showing through so we're gonna unlock this value one and now we are alright let's just let's just say our fun light source is coming from that direction so I'm gonna take black arrow let's just do the big body first Okay, let's zoom in so you guys can see what we're doing. Now there's this fun little knife tool. I think this one is super easy to use. So I like kind of using it for beginners. And I'm just gonna go right through the belly there. And so what I'm gonna look for is I want to deselect, hold shift, and all we're gonna do is go up one value. Now I don't think I like this one too much. So what I'm going to do So I don't like that orangey one. That looks a little bit better. All right. Decisions, decisions. Now I'm going to take these guys, I'm just going to color those all the darker color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this top part. Let's go back to our knife. And I'm just going to do a nice little swoop right through here. Deselect, come back, and that will be our dark value. Where else? Let's say the uh, back little part here will have a value going into the tail. So I'm going to start right at that little crease. Keep in mind you can always still start out. I'm going to come right through this little bum. I'm going to follow along. I'm actually going to let it go. So notice there's that fun little crisscross doesn't do anything all right so notice I'm coming all the way through so for any reason it doesn't do what you want it to do all that simply means is uh, you didn't go all the way through the shape let's make that guy a little darker doot, doot, doot. Right now, I'm okay with it. Hold down shift. Let's do a little cast shadow for the nose. Since he's got such a big nose. to do one for the jaw as well so let's just do right through here nice simple curve notice that the, it will smoothen out a little bit now if you ever need something that's really really perfect then I would come back and do the, uh, the pen tool all right let's do some of these ears select 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 Decisions, decisions. Let's say there'll be a shadow on this back part of the head. Let's say there'll be a shadow under each one of these little 
looping parts. All right, let's see what we're looking at. Okay, good, good, good. Nose. I want that to be darker, so I need a little bit darker area right through the nose here. Right. We are just flying. So, decisions, decisions. If you wanted a pattern, this would be a good time to do that. So, let's just kind of walk you through some patterns here. I'm going to hold down shift. All right. Now, same thing, you could do this with circles. I'm just kind of doing some random. Random little puppy dog spots. We'll see how those look. Nothing is permanent. I'm just going to go step up. That does not bother me at all. All right, let's keep moving. So this is our values. Now what I am gonna do, keep in mind we have our flat color underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our inking copy. Let's just duplicate it. And I'm gonna move it right in between our values and then our black layer. I'm gonna unlock that. And let's just double click so you know what my thought process is. So this will be our gradient layer. And reasons I do that is so I can click on the big areas still. And then we can just add in big sweeping gradients. It tends to work a little bit nicer. Now keep in mind this one still is the black. So I could totally get rid of that if I wanted. Which isn't an awful idea. But all I'm going to do is I'm select all of my base color. Let's find our gradient. There's our gradient. I'm just going to click it. I want a linear one for right now. And let's just click on our light version. Now this could be our base one. You could go white with it. Let's just go light and see what happens. All right, for the second color, I want maybe a little bit darker puppy color. And it's just so you guys know where my thought process is, let's just do it right away. Let's drop it down to 20. Yeah, let's even do it more than that. Let's go 10. And so it's going to kind of subtle. And I can always come back and let's see what we can do with this. Now, right now, each one of these is separate. So we can control each one. Now, what's happening is each one is going perfectly horizontal. But if we want them to be a little bit more towards our light source, we can always just kind of modify how these are going. Now these are all gonna be uniform. Currently they're all uniform. And this looks more complicated than it is. All I'm looking to do is just kind of take these little handles, kind of drag them to where I want.
this one might I might just get rid of that one actually okay with some of those all right so now we have a little bit more of a gradient this would be another good little time to save by the way now all that little transparency notice we have a transparent gradient it will subtly kind of make some of our variations since there's a color above it at this point so we have a color above our values if you like the more harsh values you're more than welcome to just, just keep that now what else might I want to do this guy is still bothering me come back to this guy a little better all right what do we feel like doing uh, I'm gonna say for the sake of argument let's just save this one 